Hey Measuring Hero, Jay here. Today I thought it would be fun to learn a little bit about the process of castings. Now, everyone should probably know about my love for Milan, so in order to learn about castings, I thought it would be a good idea to come all the way back to Italy so that we could learn from a world-class castings manufacturer, Tora Castings. To help us is Antonella. Antonella, thank you for hosting us and thank you for teaching us about castings. Okay, thank you for you for coming and uh, it is a pleasure to have your visit for us. We are an aluminum foundry, an Italian company, and we produce aluminum casting parts. That means all the components that you can find in your car, in, in a truck as a water pump or injection pump, in motorcycle <laughs> and in other industrial and hydraulic assemblies part. Uh, for us, it is very important to give our client quality and delivery. Who are our clients? So we are supplier of uh, Italian companies as a tier two with Magneti Marelli, but our uh, major clients are localized in Germany as for example Robert Bosch and uh, Thyssen Group and uh, we have other companies in Germany. In Italy we are supplier of company Piaggio and of company Ducati. So uh, as you can see we have a lot, yeah. we have a different range of, uh, of production and so we have a, a wider range of, uh, sure. of clients. Sure, sure. So I hear that you supply uh, motorcycles, Cars, yes. cars of the past, yeah. and cars of the future. Right? Yes, right, because we are moving, uh, thanks to the ecological transition, mm -hmm. to a mobility component sure. produced in gravity and in low pressure. Okay, well, I think uh, it's time to go in and learn about the process of Perfect, uh, of okay, testing. we can go. Yeah, sounds okay. great. Okay, so to begin us on our journey of how to basically give birth to a casting, uh, we brought in Simone. Simone, thanks for your time. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Welcome in Tora. Well, thank you very much. Now, uh, where are we and what, uh, what do they do here? <laughs> okay, this is one of our te technical offices. We have two of them. This is the biggest and the other one is in the other plant. And here, our engineers work together with the customer to co-design both the final piece and the die, which could be uh, according to uh, the customer needs and also technologically feasible. Ah, okay. So it's uh, uh, not enough to just dream the part, you have to make it. Exactly, yeah. because if you have uh, an ideal part and you cannot actually put out of the die or make it real, yeah then we have a problem yeah. and also the customer has a problem. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is it takes a lot of pre-planning to uh, begin and that all happens in this room. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Great. Absolutely, so yes. What's, the, the, what's our next step then? Our next step is the acceptance of the raw material that we purchase from our suppliers that we use to, to cast the parts. Great. Well, let's go have a look. Once we receive the, the raw material from our supplier, we test it uh, and we perform a chemical check on the composition of the raw material and only if it is compliant, the ingots are taken here. In this plant, we have three different alloys that we store in three different locations. The ingots are, there and are then taken to the furnace where they are melted and uh, we heat up the, the material uh, at a certain temperature and then we spill it, when, when, once it is melted, we spill the material inside the ladle. What we do is to take the ladle and to influx nitrogen in the molten metal, and the nitrogen bubbles have a greater affinity for hydrogen than the aluminum. So hydrogen prefers to go with nitrogen instead of remaining inside the molten metal. And so by doing this, we remove hydrogen impurities. Right, right. And then you just skim off the... Exactly. Now, we have uh, to verify that what we did was correct. So, for each ladle, before taking it to the machine for the die casting, we collect a small sample and we test uh, the 
chemical composition, because the chemical composition must be correct, and then also the density, because if the, the sample is too light, then we have too much gas inside the, the, the metal, and therefore it is non-compliant, and we have to repeat the, the gassing uh, stage again. And to do this, we, we have a scale and a vacuum system to, to test the, the actual density of the, of the metal. Understood, understood. Okay, so to begin to make your parts, you have to have good material. And uh, once we uh, have, have created that and verified it, uh, what's the next step then? Uh, then we take it to, to the actual foundry department okay. where we can uh, uh, cast it into the die and, and release the piece. All right, let's have a look. All right, uh, this is <laughs> really, really impressive. Uh, where are we in the process now? Here in Toronto, we have three technologies. One is gravity die casting, the other one is low pressure die casting, and the, the last one is high pressure die casting. This is gravity die casting, okay. which is a technology which has two key aspects. The first one is that the molten metal is driven by only gravity force to fill the die. And the second one is that in gravity die casting, you can use sand cores to create voids inside the final part. Because, for example, if you want to produce, for example, a fuel pump, you might want to have uh, inlets or channels within the piece. But if you use the, the die to, to mold those pieces, you would not be able to, to remove the actual piece from the die because it would get stuck between the steel components of, of, the, of the die. So we use sand cores, which are pieces of sand glued together of a certain shape. And, and the purpose of a sand core is to driven the metal when the, the steel of the die cannot. And we remove the, the piece with the sand core, then we remove the sand, and we have left with the piece with cavity in it. With a big, yep, yep, got it, understood. This is low pressure die casting. It is not really different from gravity die casting because, for example, we could use sand cores here as, as well. The only difference is that here, the driving force is not gravity force, but it is an, an air pressure that is inserted inside the chamber, which pushes the, um, the molten metal inside the die. I understand it's very similar, but we, we, uh, we add a little bit of air pressure to help uh, the material through. But now what quality things do you look at in this or the other process that we saw? This is a tricky question because we have inspected and verified the compliance of the molten metal. Okay. Now we have a piece and we have to verify that this part is compliant to, to the requirements. So, first of all, the operator performs a visual check on the part, and he checks whether the piece is complete or not. And this is the first control that we perform. Then, there are the quality guys in the foundry which um, collect some pieces from the machines, okay. and they perform an X-ray check. Oh, okay, an X-ray check. Now, I have to stop you for a second because this seems like quite a harsh environment. Can an x-ray machine uh, uh, survive in this? Uh... Well, actually, yes, you, you would be surprised, but in the foundry we have a Bozello machine that we have both in 2002. So it is like 21 years. 21 years in that harsh foundry environment. Yeah. Wow, wow, that's crazy. And the machine itself needs to be inspected yearly because we have to calibrate it. Yeah, yeah and to undergo the, the current mountain, the, the, the maintenance, but it is still working. It works, wow, that's crazy. Okay, so we do the, mo the material itself, and then uh, what other check do you need? Uh, apart from the X-ray and the visual check, if it is required and agree with, with the customer, according to the standard, uh, for some pieces we take uh, samples that we test in the laboratory, uh, to evaluate the, the tensile properties, whether it breaks the, the elongation, the, 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 the formation of the part, and so understood, on. Understood, understood. Okay, so uh, not only do you need to maintain the quality of the material, but once it's casted, 
you need to make sure that it's within spec. Exactly, be because uh, the, the material, the chemical composition and the density might be perfect and the process might be under control, but there is al always human error and other uh, unforecastable uh, aspects that might make a, a part non-compliant. So we have to verify the actual part that it is compliant. So we do not want to have porosities, we do not want to have uh, cracks, yeah. cold joints, uh, and so on and so on. And that's why you need the x-ray to be able to look inside. Definitely, definitely. Understood. And for some of our pieces, we perform 100% x-ray check on all of them. And for other one, if it is not uh, necessary because it is not a safety uh, piece or so on, we perform only statistical check. Understood. But is x-ray technology fast enough for your production? Yes, it is. Wow, wow. So the machines definitely keep up with your yes, process. Yes. And yeah. also another limiting factor is the size and the shape of the piece. Because maybe we have to inspect many, many positions and then it requires a longer time. But the machine is almost instant. It is know, very fast. I know the Bocello machines also, and by the way, thank you for choosing, uh, for choosing us uh, <laughs> for that. But I know that because of the complexity of your machines, uh, our ability to tilt uh, the detectors kind of helps with the speed as well. Exactly. For example, for very complex parts which have a, a complicated geometry, we need to, to tilt the detector almost uh, uh, 60 degrees to see from different angles and to rotate. And the, the more axis of freedom of rotation uh, yeah. you have, yeah. the better. And yeah. we are quite happy with, with That's that. That's fantastic. All right, well, thanks for showing this. Can we look at something else? Yes, sure. Here we are, we are in the laboratory of Tora Casting, and here we test the properties of our pieces, of some of them at least, because uh, when a piece will end up being in a car or in a motorcycle, it might be a structural component, and for safety reasons, we need to really uh, test the mechanical properties of that piece. So, for example, we can use this machine to pull the, the sample pieces that we take out from the pieces mm -hmm. and to evaluate how much force it is required to break the test and the, the, the test sample and also to measure uh, what is the elongation that occurs before breaking it mm -hmm. because you do not want to, to ride a bike <laughs> which breaks. Also, when we have some issues with the customer, because for example, we supply to him a fuel pump and the fuel pump has a leakage. Mm -hmm. uh, leakages often are caused by porosities which are left inside the material and therefore the fuel can, can go through. And so we can analyze those, those porosities uh, using a microscope to, to verify Mm, what ha they have been caused by, because uh, for example, it might have been caused by temperatures, by inclusions, by gas, and so on. Right. To do that, we need to mirror, po to, to cut the, the piece in, in a certain position that we want to analyze, and then we use this machine to mirror polish the surface of the sample, yep. and in order to, to be able to observe it using the microscope. Got it, got it. We have been in the foundry where we actually cast the parts, and then there we also perform a rapid x-ray check to verify uh, immediate problem that we can correct already in the foundry. Then the parts are taken to the cut department where the operators remove the feeders and the inlets of the aluminum uh, uh, metal, mm -hmm. and then we perform another x-ray check which um, a much more sophisticated and recent machine, like this one that we have on, on the back. And, uh, and then, if the pieces are compliant, are taken to the following stages of the process. And we do the X-ray check immediately after the cut, because in this way, all the non-compliant parts are filtered out and we do not need to process them and to spend money on them. Yeah, 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 yeah. very efficient. Exactly. And after that, we perform the thermal treatment. Then the parts are taken in this department where the final visual check is performed. And the operator check for uh, remainings of bursa on, on the piece, remaining of sand and, uh, and so on. And then here they package them, they bring to the warehouse and then they are shipped. Now, okay. I understand, and sorry to break into the production here, 
But I understand that one of the uh, benefits that Torah casting has is your ability to do a uh, quick part turnaround. How does that happen? Uh, thankfully, we have a very big uh, uh, tool shop where we are able to, to fix the dies and also we, we um, realize our own dies uh, internally and, and uh, we perform maintenance. Understood. So your ability to quickly make your own dies helps you with your customers and that's because you have your own machine shop here. Exactly. I got it, I got it. All right, all right, Simone. Uh, I understand there was a third process uh, and we only saw two. Exactly, it is a high pressure die casting, but it is in the other plant, which is in Carabio degli Angeli. And there we also have the machining of the part. Okay, understood. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, let's save that for uh, two weeks from now for our next vlog. Yes, please. we'll do that. For you out there, uh, don't forget to subscribe to get notified on when the next uh, part two to this vlog happens. But until then, don't forget to stay safe and stay healthy. And we'll see you then.